Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the Sheffield United career mode. Today this episode should be an interesting one as we have got a lot of very good games coming up so I will hope that you guys enjoy it. Obviously in the last episode we finished deadline day and picked up our brand new signing in Yanis. So we've got a pretty decent squad depth now and it's going to be interesting moving forward so I will probably bring you guys back in a split second if there's something I want to show you all. So now that the transfer window is over, I thought that it would be a good time to show you everyone that we have in the squad as well as the development schedules that they are all on so that you can see how they are growing or have grown. So this is how we're going. Aaron Ramsdale, he's trained on a sweep keep because we thought it would be interesting to increase his kick in because I do like to play it out the back. A bunch of these lower rated players I didn't really bother with because I didn't really think they were going to get a chance. Osborne we're training his defending, Mendes we're increasing his defending and most of his other stats. Egan and Jack O'Connell both obviously training up to be quite nicely at the back. Baldock, we're training to be a bit more attacking because we need some... Bogle, I kind of forgot we had him, so we will probably look to increase in his at some point. But we've got Santa Berg on an anchor man, hopefully trying to get him up to that five-star weak foot. Cool Barley training to become a CDM so it can fit in. Fleck and Norwood, both just training to be good. Buzikis trained him on attacking midfield to help his passing. Smith Rowe trained him on Shadows Drake to increase pace and shooting. But Goldrick is just trying to keep him as high rated as possible. Mousset, I didn't really put one on him because I thought he needed to balance that. So Oliver Berg, we trained him to get 5 star weak foot. Brewster, we trained him earlier and got the 5 star weak foot already, so we trained him on target man to help his physicals a bit. And McBurney, we're keeping him on balance because I feel like getting him in a balanced training session should help him grow more stats overall than what we need so that's how the players are looking there are all the players we have in the squad and that's how they're developing so i guess i'll bring you guys back where we are at our first game of this episode so the first game of this episode is really 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 difficult we're up against liverpool currently second in the league but are most likely going to be fighting for champions so it's going to be a very difficult game and we are away as well so traveling to Anfield is not the easiest game to kick off this episode but it should be an interesting game nonetheless. And we have got our first game here it is a beautiful day here at Anfield and it's going to be a very nice game here hopefully we can grab it a little bit of security by grabbing an early goal but it should be pretty difficult nonetheless. And here is Liverpool's lineup for you. Allison is starting in goal. Back four of Trent, Gomez, Van Dijk and Robertson. The midfield of Thiago, Fabinho and Wijnaldum. And the ever so famous front three of Salah, Firmino and Mane. And here is our lineup. Aaron Ramsdale between states, an unchanged back four, which has been with us the entire season. Sanderberg is partnered by Ismaili Koulibaly. Smith Throw and McGoldrick provide him for whip. And Rian Brewster against his former club is partnered by Oliver Burke. And Liverpool are kicking off this first half. We've got they've got high expectations to demolish us this game, so as long as we can keep it a tight game, hopefully we should get on alright. Ball play through, no, surely not. Brewster against his former club. He scored. We've grabbed an early goal here, Ryan Brewster against, I've got to show the respect, against his former club, who he has won the Champions League with. And he has made them pay. Simple ball through, so much space in that Liverpool defence, almost like the defending against Leicester. But we've ran through, we've scored, and Brewster has managed to nick one against his former club to put us 1 0 up early in this game. George Baldock with the space here. Is Ryan Brewster. So we have a free kick on the edge of the box here. Koulibaly is taken. Oh, I just couldn't green time it. Liverpool with the chances by now. they running into the box. It's blocked by Eager. It's not. It's a penalty apparently. Once again, John Egan, he's had such a good game so far. He's intercepted a bunch of passes and denied them a few chances, but he's given away a handball again. What? How is that? He's, he, he cleared off his... 
You know, I don't understand this game sometimes, but most Salah against Iron Ramsdale is the post. <laughs> We've gave away three penalties this season and somehow not conceded a single one. We've been off the hook here. Good challenge from Egan again. But we've got a lot of plays in this attack here. Can Smith Rowe pick out the right option? He's knocked it back. Post for Oliver Beck to score. And we've gone 2 0 up. We've caught Liverpool napping and we've capitalised. I still love the fans cheering, but we had a three on two. And then it's a simple ball across and a simple finish for Oli Burke. And we have punished Liverpool. That missed penalty from Salah is really coming to bite them now. Ball played out wide is McGoldrick. Ball played through the middle. Can Oliver Burke get onto it? He can. Is that basing Fabinho? He scored as well. Wonderful finish. And we've just gone 3 0 up against Liverpool at Anfield. We've just caught them on the break a good couple of times. And Oliver Burke just smashes that right into the top corner. Lovely finish. Half time approaching is fast here. Obviously, just picks up that late goal with Oliver Burke and. Liverpool not in the best of positions here but it is dreamland for us 3-0 up in the first half against Liverpool we must be doing something right. our attack has been unstoppable so far this man here with two goals he has been pretty crucial to this first half performance so we're kicking off the second half here with a three goal advantage and Liverpool surely must be wondering what they're doing wrong because We've not been incredible defensively this season, but yet we've managed to go the half without conceding. Trent back to Salah, into Fabinho, into Firmino. Ball played, intercepted from Smith. Rupp pass to Firmino and he scored. Oh, I just had to open my mouth, didn't I? I was not conceding. Why is he celebrating like that in front of the fans? <laughs> Grab the ball. Oh, the Liverpool fans would be slating you right now, Bobby. But, oh, it's just poor because Smith Rowe pulls off an incredible interception to stop the ball going there. But he's just passed it straight to Firmino. And Firmino can't finish like that, so it's pretty unfortunate. But it's 3-1 now. Let's say this isn't the start of a comeback. No, Salah's in here. It's a good save from Ramsdale. Oh no, it's a chance for Liverpool. Firmino against Ramsdale and he's put it away. Firmino's grabbed his second of the game and Liverpool are now in a very good position to make it 3-3. Still got over 10 minutes left, so this isn't looking very good. It's a gift of a ball from Baldock. Passes it straight to Firmino and it's a simple finish one-on-one -on -one against the keeper. Got a double substitution here though. We are bringing on Chris Basham and Janis for his debut. We are changing to a 5-4-1. Janis playing on the left and Basham joining the defence. Here's Isma. Ball played through. Here's Janis. First, no not first time ball. But here's Oliver Burr with a chance to win it. He's into it straight to Allison. <laughs> That's what, what I expect from him. From his terrible shooting stats. Back to Thiago. It's tackled from Basham. Kula Bali running out of the defence with a... No, I didn't want that to Oliver Burke there, but we still managed to make it work. Ball played back Stokes for Smith Rowe, who has undoubtedly won it for us now. Liverpool were piling on the pressure in the last few minutes of this game, but we've managed to grab a late goal. 4-2 here, away at Anfield, and what a performance from Oliver Burke. Two goals and an assist. Been a pretty good day for the Scotman. Game is all but over here. Two more minutes remaining of the three added on in Liverpool. It's not been a good day at the office for them. They've missed a few chances and that missed penalty from Salah has really, really helped us out in the start of the game. But, Conrad, three minutes have been played. Come on. 
There we go. We've done it. We've managed to grab a shock win here at Anfield. A 4-2 win as well. So we've we played really well up front that game. We created a lot of chances. It would it was obviously nice to keep them to only two goals as well, but we should probably work on not giving away penalties. For me, you know, he had a decent game scoring twice, but still not enough to help Liverpool to a win here. So after that great performance, I can say fair that I'll bring you guys back when we're back in the main menu. So a very impressive win against Liverpool in our last game has seen us move up to 10th. Currently leading... Well, we're currently in the middle of quite an impressive because we are one point out of 11th and 12th, but we're only one point behind up to 7th. So we're looking in a good position. We could be pressing higher than what I originally thought we could for this season, but good team performance, but we're going to probably need it again as our next game is another big one in Chelsea. So we've got a massive game here in Chelsea and after a good performance against Liverpool I'm surely hoping for more of the same. Chelsea only one point ahead of us but with a lot of standout players we are in for a very difficult game. We are at home this time so not the easiest game but at least we are at home in hopes of maybe having the home supporters back us after that huge win at Liverpool. So we have a very big game ahead of us here at Bramall Lane. Chelsea we are coming here in hopes of to bringing us back down to earth after our shock win at Liverpool, but should be an interesting game. And here is our starting lineup. Aaron Ramsdale saw two mistakes. Back four remains the same. However, in midfield there has been a change. Oliver Norwood regains his spot in the side. Smith Rowe and McGoldrick stay up together. And after his incredible performance, Oliver Burke remains up top and is partnered by Rian Brewster. And here is the Chelsea lineup for you. Kepper starts between the stakes. A back five of Reece James, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, Christensen, and Marcus Alonso. Two midfielders in Jorginho and Kovacic. And up front is Florian Tovan, Timo Ven, and Christian Pulisic. Back five, so it's going to be difficult to break down. So let's hope that our front two can provide a decent job. And we're kicking off here and. As previously mentioned, a back five means that the two supporting midfielders are really going to have to provide for the two strikers. As they're not going to be able to break down a back five by themselves, but technically we are playing with a front four, so that gives me a bit more hope. Oliver Burke plays in midfield, and Sander Burke with a long shot, tipped away by Kepper. A lovely play here. Oliver Norwood running through on goal against Kepa. He slots it away nicely. We've robbed an early goal against Chelsea, similarly we did at Liverpool. A lovely passing move between Brewster, Berg and Norwood. And it's just a simple finish past Kepa. One on one, Norwood never in doubt. Lovely passing move again. It's Smith Rowe running in behind. We took on the shot early. I don't know why I took the shot on so early, but Kepa has planned it away, and we have got a corner from it, though. Norwood crosses it in. Berg scores. Manages to climb over the entire Chelsea defence. Even manages to climb above the keeper and puts it away. Not the greatest of deliveries, but Sander Berg, with his big frame, has managed to put us 2-0 up here. Is it a good, is it just really poor from Kepa? It's just really poor from Kepa. There was no need for him to rush out that far, but not really complaining. Managed to beat Thiago Silva and just hammers it into the middle of the net. Chelsea, got one last chance just before the half ends. We do indeed, it's Torvan. Not got anyone in the box for him though. Jorginho, nice one minute added on this. Timo Werner. He's slotted it in somehow. Chelsea have a lifeline. Three minutes into one minute added on. So that's good refereeing. But we've only got ourselves to blame for being unable to clear it. But it's still sort of annoying that <laughs> they were able and were given the chance to score. Oh, I'm going to have to his near post with not the strongest of shots either. So it's kind of poor keeping from both keepers on either end now. But Chelsea with a lifeline just heading into half time. Are we going to get a good... No, of course we don't get given a chance, though. But they're off play straight away now. But 2-1 going into half-time. I thought we were going to survive with a clean sheet at half-time. But unfortunately, we were unable to. 
Chelsea kicking off in the second half. Timo Werner's late goal gives Chelsea a lifeline. So let's just hope that we don't give away this lead. Lovely move to McGoldrick. What a finish. Kepa B turned from a long way out. McGoldrick's weak foot makes short work of this. And it's a little layoff. Urge of the box. First time strike. Beautiful finish. And we've managed to gain our two goal advantage. So we have a substitution here. We are bringing off Emmy Smith Rowe. We are bringing on Giannis, however, so. Hopefully he can make a bit more impact than he did in the last game with a bit more time on the clock and less pressure on him. Long ball played up and Oliver Burke has managed to receive it from McGoldrick. Is Rudiger, is he going to close him down? But he doesn't matter because Oliver Burke has scored and we've managed to put another one past Chelsea. We've scored four goals in the, against the big teams in the last two games. So, it's another shock performance, however. Why is our team playing so well? Oliver Beck, I wasn't really not expecting him to finish it, but he's managed to prove me wrong. So I thought it was necessary to show for our midfield, and Rian Brewster is coming off for Jonathan Fleck. And we have changed to a 4 1 2 1 2 with two centre mids, and Norwood and Fleck on either side of it. Chelsea putting us under a lot of pressure. Ball played out wide to Torvin, safe from Ramsdale. Godric has won it, here's Giannis, running at the defence, Sander Berg, got a late chance here for us to maybe grab another one against Chelsea, balled up with the ball, flicked away by Rudiger, Chelsea looking to maybe grab another goal to at least make the scoreline look less embarrassing, but it's not going to matter, we have picked up a 4-1 win, we have looked absolutely incredible in these last two games, Oliver Burke is playing out of his skin. Two good goals as well from Norwood. Berg, McGoldrick's goal was also extremely good. So an overall good performance, but Oli Burke has played really well so far for us this episode. Almost against Chelsea in our last game, we have now pushed up a little bit of our own league. Our next game, however, as you probably can see, is Everton in the Carabao Cup. So should be a very interesting game and yeah. I guess that we should probably see how it goes. I'm not too sure what we're going to expect. We are still going to be playing our more backup side. Is I don't really want to push too far in it. I'd much rather focus on starting strong. If it was the FA Cup, however, though, I would probably be more tempted and inclined to go for a stronger squad. But I guess bringing guys back in the game. So we are back at Goodison Park here. We have returned after our first game of the season. And today we have got a Cabo Cup fixture. We have decided to play this one because it is more of a bigger team. So it should be a more interesting game. We have got more of our, we have played our backup side with a few inclusions from the first team just because I don't want to play an extremely weak side. So, from the looks of it, under walking out here, Everton are not playing the strongest of sides, so we should hopefully be able to create a decent game. So, Everton's lineup is as followed Pickford, John, Ndika, Godfrey, Digne, Dekure, Besic, Bola, Brodhead, Six, and then King. Got Calvert Loon on the bench there, so we should be wary of them. That's how we're setting up, though. So, hopefully, we can break through without conceding too many goals because obviously they've got two more younger players on the wings. But Josh King could prove to be difficult to defend against. But our lineup is as followed Fotheringham, Boggle, Basham, Jagielka, Rodwell, Osborne, Giannis, Fleck, Koulibaly, McBurney, and we've set. We have got some of our stronger players on the bench, as you can see right here. But we are playing the five at the back, just because we have a lot of centre-backs on the bench. But, yeah, pretty interesting game we should have for you. Two defensively-minded formations, so should be a game of a few goals. And Everton are kicking off here. This Carabao Cup fixture could be crucial for either side this season, as one team will be getting knocked out. And Osborne with a chance, ball out wide, it's crossed in, back stick to Janis. Flight with the ball out wide is Jaden Bogle. It's a lovely ball, he's gonna have to go alone. Jaden Bogle, he's put it away. 
We've grabbed a goal here against Everton. It's a very good finish despite him being a right back. I was not expecting it to hit the back of the net so easily, but not really going to play. It's a lovely run and a lovely ball from John Fleck, and Bogle just finishes it past Pickford with little effort. Cool ball just manages to win it. Can we get onto this? We cannot get onto the one two, unfortunately. But that's going to be the end of the first half. Well, it should be. But we're going in one nil up here, so looking pretty in a pretty decent position. So we'll be kicking off the second half here. We have moved Giannis into a more advanced role. He will now be playing as an attacking midfielder. So hopefully that allows him to get a bit more in the game and maybe help us create a few more chances. Everton starting to create some momentum with Allen running in. And it's a shot from Allen. The substitute makes his mark on the game with an extremely good finish. Very nice long shot. Manages to beat Fodderingham from quite far out. It's really annoying for that we were giving away that. We just gave him so much space. Uh, he just fires the one in. Absolute rocket that. McBurney holding up play nicely. Lovely ball through his Ismaili Akula Bali. And he slots it away. Come on. Regained our lead. It's been a very uneventful game, bar the two cups that we've scored. And nice hold up play from McBurney. And that just allows us to run through with Ismaili Akula Bali and simply just pass it past Pickford. He loves the Carabao Cup, doesn't he, Yisma? And we are making a triple substitution here. We are bringing on Oliver Burke, George Bardock, as well as Jack O'Connell, because our players were quite tired, so we've had to sub them off. Jaggy Elka's come off, so has Mousset, and so has Jaden Bogle, the goal scorer of our first goal. Bardock's running down the wing here. He's got space and time to pick out the cross, and Pickford's made a meal of it, and it's cleared by Calvert-Lewin. Overturn, piling under pressure late in the game here. Still got a chance to maybe take this to penalties. This ball played out wide. Still got it. Cool for Lewin has put it past Fodderingham. No. Fodderingham has been beaten at his near post. He manages to get a touch, but it still goes through. It's quite poor defending from me. Then just, oh, it's so poor. Everton have levelled it in the 90th minute of the game. And I think this game should... It's either going to go to extra time or... I'm not too sure where it is. But I guess I'll bring you guys back in a sec. So it did go to penalties. I weren't sure because I know that in some games it does go to extra time. But we've saved the first penalty as well. So that puts us in a good position. Can McBurney slot this away? He can. Richarlison stepping up. And he's skied it. I've red timed it. Oh, you're kidding. Ah, why did I do that? It doesn't matter. We've saved it. We've saved it. You know what? We're going to pin anchor it. It's backfired. This has been such a bad penalty shootout. Can Broadhead score? He can. Can Janice? Smashes it home. If we save this, then we win. And then you skied it, which means that we do win. It was such a poor penalty shootout. What <laughs> was the final? 2-1. Lots of penalties missed. Some saved by the keeper. But we've managed to get through to the next round. I probably would have preferred getting knocked out. But looks like we are making it to the next round of the Carabao Cup. So we've managed to get through just on penalties. But we have managed to advance through to the, in the Carabao Cup. Our next game of the season is Southampton as you can see. So I guess I'll bring you guys back when we are in the game. So we've got a game here at St. Mary's and it is going to be a very interesting game. 
because Southampton are they're a decent side. They can cause a few upsets. They have done so in the Premier already this season. So how today goes, I'm not really too sure, but should be a very eventful game. So here is the Southampton lineup for today's match. Franco Armani in goal. Kyle Walker-Peters, Mami Salisu, Yannick Vesco and Charlie Taylor completed back four. Theo Walcott, Romeo McGregor and Che Adams in midfield. And Danny Ings is up top with Robin Kaysen. And our lineup for this game, Aaron Ramsdale stays between the stakes. George Bardot, John Egan, Jack O'Connell and Nuna Menes at the back. Sander Berg with Oliver Norwood in midfield. And the front fourth has my score eight goals in the past two games is what we are going with up front today. So Fampton kick off the ball here and as previously mentioned should be a difficult game. Hopefully we don't concede too early but well concede in general but I'd really like us to maybe grab an early goal here just to set the tone. So Fampton with a very good chance here with Ings who has managed to break through and he's put it through Ramsdale's legs. This is not the start we wanted at all. Danny Ings, he's a very good striker for them in real life and he has made us pay. Just easily gets through and then slots it right through and that is not an ideal start for us. Here's McGregor. He's got a lot of space. Why, why have we not got anyone in defence? Where is everybody? Why would they let me switch to anyone? How can we go from scoring four against Liverpool and four against Chelsea to going 2 0 down to Southampton within half an hour? Why wouldn't it let me switch to any defender? Why is all the, why is our left back on uh, right back? Just let oh. Terrible, terrible defending. It's Danny Ings in again. Oh, I've just had to take him out. It's probably gonna be a red card, but I couldn't risk it. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I could not risk Danny Ings putting us 3 0 up just like that. I'd rather take the yellow card and just hope that we can survive from this free kick because James Ward Prowse isn't playing. If he was playing, I probably wouldn't have done it. But Nuno Mendes, first player to get a red card under us. And it is Walcott to take the free kick. He's put it wide. We are a man down, unfortunately. However, we're still only two down now. So we've still got a chance to get back into this game now. Oh, it doesn't matter because we've gone 3-0 down anyway now because of Danny Ings. Yes, just what we needed. This is not going too well, this game. We've gone down by three. Just poor defending again. Just let them through and through again. Half time approaching, but we have got a chance to maybe get one back here. Oliver Burke plays it across and Brewster grabs one back for us. So we are still in this game. Let me grab the ball. I'm just going to skip it. I won't let me grab the ball. You know what, with two goals in the second half, it's doable. It's very much doable, so... As long as we don't give away any stupid goals in the second half, there's still always a chance of us coming back. But... Not the greatest of first halves we've had here. Yeah, I didn't think we'd be allowed to play on, but... Two goals down, on ten men. It's an uphill battle. So we have made a few changes here at half time. First off, David McGoldrick has came off and Ben Osborne has come on to replace him at left back. And we've also had a formation change just to close up the team and make it a bit more secure in midfield. With us now missing one. We've changed to a 4 1 2 1 2 narrow variation. So hopefully we might be able to, might be in it for a chance here actually. Yeah. 
No, we've lost it. Uh, yeah, so hopefully we can maybe grab an early goal in the second half and hopefully claw something from this game. Nicely, here's George Baldock. Has he got the beating of Charlie Taylor? We're soon to find that out. Ball played in. Here's Brewster with a poor torch. Oh. Oh, no. No. Such poor defending. And we conceded again. This time it's Stuart Armstrong. Ramsdale beating his near post again. We just can't defend. We were holding out quite a nice and then just a simple through ball from Romeo leads to Southampton fourth. We're creating chances. We weren't really, it weren't anything too good, but we were putting pressure on them and then they've just gone and scored just like that. Ball whipped in. Oliver Burke, how have you not scored there? How? It's a delightful cross it in. I mean, it's a good save from the keeper at point blank range, but Oli Burke should be scoring there. From the looks of it, this game is all but over. Southampton looking to maybe grab a fifth here. Yeah, still Armstrong plays it through. Over Femi, but it's saved by Ramsdale. There's no point making good saves now, Aaron. We've been poor this game. We've gone from scoring four in the past two to conceding four. So, it's not been a very good game for us here we're definitely gonna have to work hard but there's the final time whistle and it's been a very shocking performance from us today full time Southampton 4 Sheffield 1 so obviously Nuno Mendes being suspended puts us in an unfavorable situation in our next game but these sort of things happen and we're gonna have to claw back it was a very shocking result against Southampton did bring us back down to earth it was we probably should not have been able to beat Liverpool and Chelsea that badly not really much else we can do but that is going to be the end of the episode here guys I hope you enjoyed we played four games in this episode three in the Prem one in the Carabao Cup so pretty exciting and that's about all I've got left to say so hope you all enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one